Cheers, Greg. So when we put together the program for Brighton SEO, and um, we kind of grouped the talks into, into three, um, and this one's the future of search. Hopefully um, you know that because you chose to come here. Um, and so I was really excited to put these two talks together, and the, well, three in total. But I was especially pleased when we put out to a vote and then we see what people have voted and which ones they're most interested in and then decide which stage to put them on. So I was really pleased when this particular session um, came up and got voted to go on the main stage because um, hopefully you can see Han Solo over there. Um, our next speaker shares is a namesake of Han Solo. So it's almost like destined to be, isn't it? So if we could have a big round of applause and welcome to the stage, um, Tim Sally. He's going to be talking about keyword research, a topic I love. If we give him a big round of applause, make him feel very welcome. Hey, one. Hey, guys. Um, so we're going to talk about keyword research, and I'm not as, as entertaining as Greg. So I'm one of those speakers that usually stands here and is shy to talk, but let's see how it goes. Uh, so what you need to know about me uh, is that I'm chief marketing officer and product advisor at HRS, and I don't think I have time to brag about some other things, uh, but I can brag about our own results with our own keyword research and growing traffic to our own business. So in four years that I've been with HRS, we managed to grow our search traffic, traffic from Google specifically, by 15x. And not only that, uh, for the past four years, our annual revenue was growing at about 60% year over year. So not only we are driving search traffic to our website, we are actually driving the traffic that converts. And I am going to teach you exactly how we do that in our own company. So basically, it boils down our keyword research, the way we pick uh, what we want to write about, what kind of pages we want to have on our website. Uh, we break it down to three things. First is traffic potential, second is business potential, and third is ranking potential. And we're going to start with tra traffic potential, of course. So how do you usually do keyword research? You have keywords. You know the search volume of, the, of these keywords, like how many times per month people are searching for a specific keyword. And basically, the more the search volume of a keyword, the more potential traffic you're going to get, right? So if we take uh, two keywords, one is squeeze page, and another one is how to get traffic to your website. So the first one gets like three times more search volume th than the other one, right? So if you create a page about squeeze page, you're going to get more traffic than if you create a page about how to get traffic to your website, right? Wrong. If we look at the number one ranking page for both keywords, for squeeze page and for how to get traffic to your website, you'll see that the number one ranking page for, for a seemingly more popular keyword actually gets, what, like 15 times less traffic or so? But why? Like, why does it happen? Is it quality or depth of content on that page? Is it the number of strong backlinks to the pages? Or is it some black hat SEO magic? And I'm in tune with the Star Wars theme. So it's actually what we call at, at HFs, at our marketing department, total search traffic potential of a keyword or of a topic. So the thing is, whenever you publish a page and you want it to rank in Google, a page will never rank for just a single keyword that you optimize it for. It will rank for all sorts of variations, uh, the long tail search and all that. We actually did a study of three million search queries. We wanted to know how many other keywords an average top ranking page would also rank for. And the average number was like a thousand. So if you rank number one in Google for a specific keyword, you will also rank for a thousand relevant keywords because there's just no way that everyone in the world would search for the same thing in the same way. In the same way. Everyone has their own ways of searching for something. So if, if we go back and look at the number one ranking page for both keywords, we'll see that the amount of search queries related to squeeze page is much, much smaller than the amount of ways of how people are looking to solve problem of getting traffic to a website. So as you can see, there are many ways of how people would search for how to get traffic to your website. And I'm sure everyone in SEO, they know the concept of the search demand curve. So if we take all the searches from all around the world, uh, there would be a few highly popular searches like Google, Netflix, 
uh, Facebook, Gmail, and whatever those little things that huge amounts of people around the world are searching for. And there's, there, the, there's a huge long tail of searches, of less popular searches. Uh, I don't even know what, how do I get rid of stain on my carpet or anything like that. It is not as popular as searching for Netflix. But the thing is, each individual topic that you're targeting on your website, it actually has a search demand curve of its own. And the total search traffic potential that you're going to get from a specific topic is basically based on how many other ways there are that people would search for this. So in this example, you see that squeeze page, there are not too many keywords, there are not too many ways of how people in Google would search for squeeze page. Squeeze page, what is squeeze page? Squeeze pages, squeeze page examples, and like that's pretty much it. So it starts strong, and the search volume of the main keyword of the topic is very strong, but then it drops down rather dramatically. But on the other hand, if we look at the topic of how to get traffic to your website, there's like thousands of, and thousands of ways of how people around the world would look for this. Uh, free website traffic, how to get traffic to your website, free traffic, increase website traffic, how to increase website traffic. So different people would search it differently. And even though the topic, the top keyword of the topic is not as popular, the long tail, the other ways of how people would search for this is pretty dramatic. And because Google understands the intent behind those search queries, it would basically rank the same page and in total that page would get a lot more traffic. Okay, so how much traffic, like we wanted to know, how much traffic would the top keyword contribute to the page as opposed to all other relevant keywords that the page would be ranking for. Uh, so we started nearly 11,000 random pages. And what we discovered is that nearly half of these pages getting less than 30% of traffic from the top keyword, which means that you have, you're getting more traffic from all those variations, from ranking to, for all those variations than for ranking for the top keyword. And the reason why I have this Pokemon here is because it is an example of a page that gets like 90% of traffic from its top keyword. So because like, I don't even know like how else would you look uh, for that Pokemon uh, other than for its own name. And it's not because I'm a fan of Pokemons, it's because I was checking the data and saw this example. Okay, so how to apply this knowledge? It's pretty simple. Don't stop looking just at the search volume of individual keywords. A lot of people would base their content marketing decisions just based on how much uh, searches each keyword gets per month. Analyze the actual top ranking pages for the keywords that you want to rank for and analyze how much traffic these pages are getting in total and how many keywords they're ranking in total. This way you'll, you'll be making much more educated uh, decisions and you'll be able to grow your website traffic faster. Uh, and I actually wrote not one, but two articles on that topic, on the topic of uh, search volume and long tail keywords. So uh, I will be tweeting my slides later and uh, you probably get them later. Check, check them out. Okay, now we're approaching business potential. Uh, like I said, it is one thing to grow traffic to your website and it is, it is another thing to make sure that this traffic will convert into leads, customers and sales. So I'm usually doing uh, competitive research I'm plugging blogs of our competitors into our own tool to see what kind of traffic they're getting. And the other day I was checking HubSpot blog. I'm sure many of you guys know HubSpot. They are getting 6 million visits per month from Google alone, which is like crazy. But then I looked at their top pages, the pages that bring them the most traffic from search. Yeah, so this slide is a little bit corrupted. But yeah, the number one page that brings traffic to HubSpot blog is Shrug Emoji. So basically HubSpot is quite a like sophisticated CRM slash marketing automation software. And their content marketing department is writing articles about Shrug Emoji, where people will just search for Shrug Emoji, copy paste it, send it to their friend, and they're gone. I don't know like what's their thought process behind selling people who are looking for Shrug Emoji uh, complicated CRM software, but oh well. Here at HREFs, in our own content marketing department, we have something we call business potential score. Uh, and for us, it is as important as the total search traffic potential of a topic. And it's, it's a pretty simple score from zero to three, where three 
means that your product is almost an irreplaceable solution to the problem. So if you talk about the topic of weight loss, the most irreplaceable solution is to kind of eat less. It's a diet. So without a diet, it is hard to lose weight. Uh, and if you have a, a, an article about weight loss, it is the most easy way to, to sell people on their individual diets. Business potential score of two means that your product is helpful to the problem, but the problem can be, can be solved without it. So again, way to, back to weight loss, it's probably supplements. So you can lose weight if you just optimize your diet, eat healthier, eat less, etc. But if you use supplements, you can lose weight faster. Business potential score, score of one. Your product is barely relevant to the problem, but you still can squeeze it into your article or into your page. So back to weight loss example, uh, it would be kettlebell. So kettlebell, it helps you like with some exercises where you can like uh, burn a lot of calories, but it is not in any way essential to losing weight, so you can hardly mention it. And clearly the business potential score of one means that there's not, not even a chance to mention your product uh, in the content. So let's talk about ranking potential. Usually when we are talking, uh, when we plan our content, when we talk to our boss, when we talk to our clients, everyone has the goal of ranking number one. If you create a page on your website, whether it is an article, a landing page or whatever, you want it to rank number one. But let me tell you this, the goal of ranking number one is overrated. And uh, it is not just uh, me saying this, we have data to prove this. So in HRFs, we have this report where for your keyword, we would pull the top ranking pages and show you the SEO metrics of these top ranking pages. So basically here are the top ranking pages for the keyword, keyword research tools. And what I've noticed is that number one ranking page gets in total 6,000 visitors, while the number, what is, six ranking page gets almost 20,000 visitors from search. Another example, keyword, what is SEO? The number one ranking page for what is SEO gets 25,000 visitors from search, and the number five gets like almost twice that, 42. So once I, uh, while I was researching topics for our own blog, for our own website, for some of my friends, etc., I started noticing this pattern more and more. So I asked our data science uh, uh, guy to run this analysis at scale. So what we did is we started 100,000 search queries. We pulled the search results for 100,000 search queries. And what we saw is that the top ranking page would be the one getting the most traffic only half of the time. So even if you rank number one or number three or number four, you still can generate more traffic in total than the number one ranking page. This is why I'm saying that number one is overrated. Of course, like the other half of the times, number one page would get like the most traffic, but still, how do you outperform number one if you just cannot rank there? Uh, I don't have much time to go into it, but overall it is a more broad topic and more links because we studied the correlation uh, on a data set of almost 1 billion pages. And what we saw that there is a direct correlation of how much traffic a page, of, of how much search traffic a page is getting and how much backlinks it has. So uh, if you try searching for a thing like uh, chocolate Labrador, you'll see that some of the pages are specifically targeting chocolate Labrador. But you'll also see a Wikipedia page there ranking at position number five, and that Wikipedia page would be about Labradors in general. So the reason Wikipedia ranks there is because they have so many backlinks and they have a broad topic that Google is comfortable showing them for a more specific things that are kind of fleetingly slightly covered on their page. Okay, and the actual secret to ranking number one, which we figured out in our own marketing department, is search intent. So let me tell you a story of our backlink checker landing page. So whenever you have a SaaS company or a product business or whatever, you would usually create uh, feature, individual feature pages to cover like what you have in your business, in your software, etc. So we had a page to tell our customers that we have a backlink checker and clearly we wanted that page to rank in Google for the term back backlink checker. But what that page was is basically a listing 
of the features of our backlink checker, some images there, how it works, etc. And the call to action was for people to take seven day, seven dollar trial. So we did everything. We optimized the speed, we optimized images, we like the keyword targeting. Like we know some SEO, so we made sure that we optimize it to the maximum, but Google said, no, we don't like the page. It was hovering somewhere at the bottom of the first page. I think we never got past the position number eight. So what we noticed is that all the pages that were outranking us for backlink checker, they were free tools. So while people that were arriving on our landing page, we invited them to take a $7 trial, which is quite a huge commitment. The other tools were letting them use them for free right away. So we learned the lesson, and what we did, we almost didn't change anything on the page. It was still optimized the same way. The texts, the texts on the page stayed the same. We only basically added the uh, form where you can input your website or URL, and we would show you your backlinks. Basically, we, cre we turned our landing page into a free tool. And Google said, yeah, now we like it. And let me tell you, let me show you what happened to that page. So this is what nailing search intent looks like. Not only our page shot up without any additional backlinks, without any additional optimization, without any additional interlinking, our page shot up to number one search result for backlink checker. And like I said, ranking number one for just individual keyword is not the end. So you can see how much are the keywords at the bottom the graph shows how many other keywords our page started ranking for. So we rank for like everything backlink checker related just for nailing search intent and turning our landing page into a free tool. So yeah, uh, it seems that most of the things that I've shared today are simple. They are not complex, but at the same time, uh, we studied our database of content, almost one billion pages of content. And what we figured is that 90% of pages in our database, and that's a database of quality content, are not getting any search traffic from Google at all. Which means either those people are not interested in targeting uh, anything where people would find them, or just don't know how to do it. So please do your keyword research, and please start getting search traffic from Google. And that's it. If you want to connect with me, I have a dedicated page at hrefs.com website, hrefs.com slash team. You can find all my social accounts there. Uh, feel free to connect, ask me any questions, and I'll be happy to talk to you somewhere in the corridors.